Yes, sir. Um, are you more likely, based on what we talked about with the, especially the infliximab uh, levels up and down, if the patient's not responding well, do you prefer to shorten the interval of the flu zone or increase the dose? That's... Yeah, make it 65,000. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a very good question, and it was not topic of my talk. What we have to do in Belgium, actually, is decrease the interval, because we cannot increase the dose, but we do. We have some tricks to do that. Um, and we go by the response of the If a patient comes in and says, well, I was good for six weeks, doc, and then it's winding off, we would just decrease the interval. If they say well, we had no response whatsoever, we try a shot of 10 milligrams to bring them back. Uh, so that's how we go by that. I mean, it depends also. I mean, if your patient is living in Grand Rapids or beyond, um, they mo might not want to come every six weeks. I mean, they have to travel a lot. So it's a bit tailored to the patient. But if you ask us what criteria do you use, that would be the main criteria. I think it's pretty, pretty similar. And then this question, maybe uh, Peter or Ellen can probably know, are we close to having a commercial adalimumab level test? We don't have that. We're not patented at ours. I mean, the, the, the university is doing it. Um, where's the microphone about alimumab? I mean, any infliximab assay is an adalimumab assay. They're using, they're using an antibody uh, against um, your, uh, they're using inflix, uh, they're using antitinevin there. So anything that binds, uh, they're, they're, that, that will bind an antitinev agent. So they, they, it's just an IgG1 against TNF assay. So if you run another standard curve, you can make your infliximab assay look like another limumab assay. So that's how we did that. And, and, and so it's not, it's not patented yet, but the university is working on our IP, so we cannot send it out. Um, you'll see more and more, I mean, you'll see more and more companies also in the US and Canada come up. By now, it's, it's patented by Prometheus, and these guys are even cleverer. They're doing now solid uh, fluid phase assays, so it, it's even beyond. But I see you will see other companies, and the price will go come down for sure. It's too expensive now, and I'm, I'm sure it'll come down in, in the next years. The data is also not as good. Adalimumab levels are not yeah. as predictive as yeah. clinical response or yeah. mucosal healing as infliximab yeah. levels. And I don't know if it's a peculiarity to assay itself yeah. or if there's really something different about the delivery. Yeah, it, it's good what Ellen says. I mean, it's ph probably pharmacokinetics, and also, I mean, and. Abbott has shown data from CHARM, I think, where there's no good correlation between clinical response and trough levels. Mind you, that was not also true in Sonic. In Sonic, the trough levels also didn't correlate with clinical remission. I think that's why Alan's point is making it clear that you shouldn't measure anyone's trough levels if they're doing well. Yeah. It's only, I think, when they're losing response and they had good response before, that's when the trough levels come in. Otherwise, not for infliximab, neither for adalimumab, and this data are weaker for adalimumab, you, wouldn't, you shouldn't measure it. It's become fashionable to measure trough levels, but know what you're doing. It raises the question, how important are peak levels? And I wonder about UC in particular. The differential, apparent differential, between infliximab and adalimab makes me wonder if part of the issue with UC is that drug delivery to the mucosa because of microvascular issues in UC might be I have no data. Uh, but if you ask my opinion, I think uh, severe colitis is a sump. It's really a sump for anti-TNF drug. And we were, we were not realizing that in the past. And, and the data from Toronto show that if, if you have measurable trough levels, patients have less likely. Of course, it's infliximab up again, Ellen's argument. But I think it's just a sump for your drug. And if you don't give enough drug, it's not going to work. We've been increasing uh, patients would inflict them up and rescue them from colectomy just by giving them an extra infusion five days afterwards or even four days afterwards and at work. It's another indirect indication of your point, Peter. I, I think you're completely right. But So if I would be working at Abbott uh, in, and I would were to design another trial for UC, I would go for probably 160, 160, 80, 80. It's not going to kill the patients. Yeah. They're afraid for cost issues, I know, but, but I mean, that would be probably the better trial to do. But, I mean, there's no going back. These trials were designed five years ago, so I can't blame them for that. Well, thank you very much, and please. Thank you.